OK, so we've dealt with multiplying and dividing fractions. We're now going to have a look at adding and subtracting them. So let's dive straight in. Let's have a look at number 1. Now we've got 1 half plus 9 halves. So I've got 1 half and 9 halves. So all together I must have 10 halves. OK, so this concept of adding fractions together is really linking back to your understanding of algebra. Because, um, you know, if you've got 1a and you've got 9a's, then altogether you've got 10a's. OK, so this idea of collecting like terms is how fractions being added and subtracted works. But if you look at number 2, we've got 3 sevenths. So we've got 3 sevenths over here. And we're going to take away 8 fifths. But a seventh is not the same as a fifth. So these two things are different. It's like having um, like 3 A's and taking away 5 B's. You know, if I've got 3 A take away 5 B, there's nothing I can do with that. But if I was able to write A in terms of B, or B in terms of A, then I would be able to combine them. And that's effectively what's going on here. So we go through this process of using cross-multiplication, which does the job for us. What we do is we multiply top and bottom of this first fraction by the 5, by the denominator of the second. So it doesn't change the size of the fraction. What it does is it gives me what I want, this common denominator. Because then if I multiply the second fraction, top and bottom, by 7, then I get 56 over 35. So now I've got 15 35s, and I'm taking away 56 35ths. Or I should say 35ths, shouldn't I? 15 35ths. 56 35ths. So I've now got the same denominator. It's like having 15c take away 56c. So this gives us minus 41 35ths. OK, so once I've got this common denominator, once I've got this commonality, collecting like terms, I'm able to combine the fractions. Now, if I'm given a problem where I've got three fractions to add together, OK, like 2 thirds, 3 quarters, 4 fifths, I want to get this common denominator. Um, it's probably easier to work with this if you think about combining two of the fractions first and then adding on the third. So if I use cross multiplication on the first two fractions, I get 2 times 4, which is 8, over 3 times 4, so 12, plus 3 times 3, over 3 times 4. OK, so I've now got these first two fractions with a common denominator, so I can add them together. 8 twelfths and 9 twelfths must be 17 twelfths. So that leaves me with the problem of combining these two fractions. So I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom of the first fraction by the 5. Now 17 times 5 is 85. 12 times 5 is 60. And then if I multiply the second fraction, top and bottom, by 12, it doesn't change the size, but it gives me... 48 over 60. So I now have a common denominator. Now I just need to add 85 and 48. So that's 133 over 60. And so that is the answer to adding those three fractions together. So we can go with it as a process. But this concept of adding fractions, which a lot of students find notoriously challenging is effectively just collecting like terms algebraically. It's just we go through this process to make sure that the denominator is the same in order that we can 
combine like terms together.